Right, so when I was planning this video, I'd originally created like a three page document online with all the notes and all the research that I had done, only to discover that when I sat down to actually record the video, the whole document had just vanished, right? Not corrupted, not missaved, just disappeared as if it never existed. And I just feel like if that didn't metaphorically epitomize my absolute hatred for verbal reasoning, then <laughs> I don't know what does. Hey, hey everyone, hope you're doing really, really well and welcome back to my channel. Sorry about the run. As you can see by the title of today's video, I'm gonna talk about the worst section of the UK exam, verbal reasoning. So let's do this. If you've never come across my channel before, welcome. My name's Julia and I'm a third year medical student at a university in London called King's College. So to start off with, let's have a quick recap of what verbal reasoning actually is, apart from the work of evil. Verbal reasoning is a section of the UK exam that examines your ability to read and comprehend information and make logical and reasoned conclusions. In this section, you have 21 minutes to read 11 passages, each containing roughly two to 300 words and answer four questions based on each passage, giving you a grand total of 44 questions. Now, if we do the maths, that gives you roughly 28 seconds per question. And if you think that's a decent amount of time, Sorry to break it to you, but you're wrong because this is actually the most time pressured section of the whole exam. Now, if you've been made to feel like you want to cry by this section, just know that you're not alone because just last year in 2019, the average UCAT score for the whole test was 620, while just for verbal reasoning was 565. So it's very well known that this is the most difficult section to score points on. So just bear that in mind when you're revising and don't be disheartened if you're getting lower than other sections. Now, as you may already know, verbal reasoning is divided into two types of questions. The first and perhaps easier type requires you to read a statement and determine if it's true, false or can't tell based on a passage. So if a statement is true, it means that it's logically correct based on the information in the passage. Simple. If a statement is false, it means that it's incorrect or the opposite, again based only on the information in the passage. If you're not sure whether a statement is true or false, that's where can't tell comes in. And can't tell basically means that there isn't enough evidence within the passage to make a valid conclusion. Now in these questions, it's absolutely vital that you use only the information in front of you. So no assumptions and no jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Just remember that if X is Y, it doesn't mean that Y is X. So for instance, if an eagle is a bird, a bird doesn't have to be an eagle type of thing. So if something is not explicitly verbalised in a passage, then the answer is can't tell and don't be afraid to use it. Also remember that you shouldn't, under any circumstances, use your own knowledge for these questions. So if a passage says that the sky is green and a statement says the sky is green, true, false or can't tell, you best believe it's true. <laughs> Because for these questions, you base your answers only on what you can read, not what you think. Next, we have the monster free text questions, which are a lot more complicated and take a lot more time. And this is where the struggle is really at. So here you'll be presented with a stem, so an incomplete sentence, and be given four options to complete the sentence. So for instance, um, Julia is studying medicine because A, B, C, D. The stems can also ask for a value judgment, which is even harder, and can ask for the author's opinion. So, for instance, um, the author would be least likely to agree with which of the following options, A, B, C or D. Now, those questions are by far the most time consuming, because ideally to make an inference like that, you would have had to read the whole passage. But I'm about to tell you not to do that. So to break it down and actually talk about how to approach each question, I'm first gonna talk about the true, false, can't tell questions, which are generally easier and quicker to do. So when the first passage and first questions load, you wanna go against your natural instinct and ignore the passage for a second and go straight to the questions. Read the question and the statements carefully and make note of any key words that you can identify in the statement. Now, key words are gonna be your little golden nuggets that you're gonna to use to hunt down later in the passage. So these need to be golden words that stand out. And the best key words are words with capital letters. So for example, names, places, um, cities, days, months, whatever, or numbers. So like dates or, um, you know what a number is. 
Once you've decided on a keyword, so your little golden nugget, what you're going to do next is called a skim and scan. So you're going to go back to the passage and skim through and scan line by line looking for that keyword that you identified in the statement. Now for the skimming and scanning, you obviously want to be really fast, but you also need to remember to be precise. So treat it as like a sort of advanced level word search. <laughs> Once you've found that key term in the sentence, what you need to do next is called targeted reading. So you read the sentence before, of, and after your golden nugget, hopefully around three or four lines in total. Hopefully within those three sentences, you would have found the answer to your question and saved yourself from having to read the whole passage. Now, if you've read those three or four lines and you're thinking, mm, doesn't really answer my question, don't panic and don't fixate. Go back a step and skim and scam from exactly where you left off. Unfortunately, with these questions, examiners want to trip you up. And so it's very likely that the keyword in the statement will appear more than once throughout the passage, which could lead you to potentially missing out vital details further down. So if you think that's the case, as I said, just go back and keep scanning. Make it a game, treat it like a treasure hunt and find all of your golden nuggets. Also, as a side note, be aware that although rarely, you may be given a numerical question which will require you to do a quick mental calculation. So for example, if the question asks about um, averages, for example. So if you don't see that number within the text passage, don't automatically assume that the answer is false, but just use the information that you're given. <laughs> One other thing to look out for in these questions are conditional terms, which can change the whole tone of the question. Conditional terms can be split into mild mitigating terms, such as can, might, some, so like the gentle, nice words, and extreme definitive words, so like must, always, definitely, certain, least. <laughs> so when answering these questions, you need to ask yourself, does the language in the statement match the language in the passage? And why is this particular word used in this question? is it potentially to throw me under the bus? Obviously, when we're under so much time pressure, it's really easy to overlook those words and make mistakes. So for example, you could see the word likely in a question and automatically assume it's definitive or vice versa. And examiners know that and they love to trip you up on it. So just be aware and be cautious. Now, take what I'm about to say with a massive pinch of salt. But I was taught that if you spot a mild mitigating phrase in your statement, then the answer is more likely to be true. Whereas if you spot an extreme phrase, then the answer is more likely to be false or can't tell. And the reason for that is because extreme phrases are very limiting which is often tricky to determine from just a two or 300 word passage. And so often an extreme phrase will be used in a question to sort of mislead you a little bit and guide you towards jumping into a conclusion. Now, obviously that's not always gonna be the case. So only use that in a last minute resort where you're super tight for time and you just need to pick an answer. Of course, I understand that all of that is so much easier said than done. But like I said in my first video, which is linked in the description, the only way to really improve and get better in this section is through practice and repetition. So as awful as it is, just get on it and make sure you get those books and newspapers out and just practice skimming. It's also really useful to practice skimming text online because it's a bit different to skimming a like, physical document because obviously you can't use a highlighter and sometimes the lighting can be a bit off-putting and tiring for your eyes. So make sure that you practice real verbal reasoning questions online as well and get used to reading longer documents, not just memes like journals and newspaper articles and skim. Now, when it comes to the monster questions, here is where you sometimes have to make a judgment call and be a bit of a risk taker. As I mentioned earlier, there are a few different types of these free text longer questions, some of which are really, really complicated. So when you have 28 seconds per question, you can't afford any luxury time to be spending on a question that you're not even guaranteed to get correct. So sometimes, not always obviously, but it might be better just to flag, guess and go. Just remember that every single question is worth one mark, whether you spend 20 seconds on it or three minutes on it. And by default, you've got a 25% chance of getting it correct because it's multiple choice. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's your own judgment call. And if you're feeling confident and you're a fast reader, then by all means, I'm jealous and go for it. But just know that in this section, I think it's okay to sacrifice a few questions for the benefit of the few that you want to get correct. Obviously, the more practice questions you do, the better of an idea and understanding you'll have for what types of questions will take you longer to do. 
and generally it's the questions that require you to make an inference that will take you the longest and they are there to slow you down. However, something that I was taught as a general rule of thumb is for questions that specifically ask for an author's opinion, the first place you want to look is the last paragraph of the passage because that's often where a closing argument will be made and we can sort of get a gist for what the author was thinking and their opinions on something. And even if in the last paragraph you're not able to find your definitive answer, hopefully you'll be able to eliminate one or two options which will obviously increase your chances of getting the question right in the end. Let's not forget though that we also have the more general longer types of questions, so the ones with the stem and the four answers like X, Y, Z happened because A, B, C or D. So for these questions you read the statement and you read all four options. Sometimes just based off of what you had already scanned through in the question before, you'll be able to hopefully eliminate one or two options just right off the bat. For the remainder of the options, once again, same story. So you pick out your golden nuggets from the statements and you go hunting in the passage to see if the keywords in the statements add up to what's being said in the passage. Remember, for complex questions, try not to settle for an answer without assessing all of your options first, because quite often you'll find that there'll be areas of gray and essentially you're looking for the best fit, so the single best answer to the statement, not just right or wrong. I really wish that there was like some sort of magic trick I could tell you to help you ace these questions, but unfortunately, as I said, verbal reasoning is mainly about learning how to scan and extract information quickly. Since you are so short of time on this question, don't double check your answers because you don't have time to be a perfectionist. Just make sure that you're really careful and cautious when you're reading your questions and answers and ideally you don't want to be spending more than a minute tops on a question because otherwise you really run the risk of not getting to the end of the section on time which unfortunately is a critical critical error I made and I paid the price for it. It sounds like my voice is breaking there. <laughs> and that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope you found it useful. I'll be creating more videos on each of the other sections of the UCAT and they will be linked in the description below, so make sure to check them out. Best of luck if you're sitting the UCAT this year. Remember, we all have a mutual hatred for this exam. So just keep at it, keep going, keep practicing. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and comment below what your most useful techniques are for verbal reasoning and hopefully we can all help each other out. <laughs> hope to see you soon. Bye.